Hi, my name is Søren Nielsen, and it's time to start looking at the different tools we have available in Spine. In this video, I'll be going over how selection works and cover the transform tools. This video will also be split up in two parts. In Spine, we don't have a dedicated selection tool. Instead, we have a smart selection system. And what this means is that selecting an item in the edit area is done simply by clicking the item you want to select. For example, if I just click the bones here, you can see that I'm now switching the selection. If you want to select multiple bones, you just hold down command and then left click on it. You see I'm now selecting multiple bones. Also, if you're holding down command and then just dragging the mouse here outside of a bone, you can see we now get a uh, selection box here. You can also select multiple um, bones without holding command, but first you need to have nothing selected. You can see now I have nothing selected and now I can do the box selection. Clearing the uh, selection is unnecessary most of the time, but like I just did, uh, you can do this by pressing either escape or spacebar. So escape or spacebar. You can also store selections by pressing command one through nine, and you can then recall these selections later by pressing the number keys without holding down command. Selection groups can greatly speed up posing a skeleton. For example, on Spine Boy here, I can go ahead here and I can pose the bones for the front leg and I press command one. You see it stored my selection. I can then take the rear leg bones here and command two. I'm gonna do the same here for the torso and the neck, command three. Then I take the front arm, command four and the rear arm, command five, and the last, command six. And now, if I deselect, you can see I can switch through these by just pressing the keyboard uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. So the main tools in Spine are found down here in the main toolbar, and we have tools and transform. And I'll be going over these now. So the rotate, translate and scale tools each work in the same way. And they work by the selected item is adjusted by dragging the mouse. And the drag should start in empty space or on the item you have selected itself. For example, I first select the bone here and I drag outside. You see, I now rotate the bone because my rotate tool is active and I can switch to translate. You see, it changes the icon here or scale and the icon changes again. I'm just gonna go back, go back to rotation. I can also rotate by just dragging in here, as I said before, but I can also just do a quick manipulation without first selecting a bone. For example, I could rotate the torso by just clicking and dragging. You can see it rotates it and I didn't have to select the bone first. This is very useful if I need to make very quick adjustments to the pose. Each transform tool has a numeric value, uh, which is displayed down here. You see these fields here. And if I select a bone, you can actually see the values. Now, if I wanted to change one of these, I could just select the rotation here and I'm entering 10. Then the new value will take effect once I hit either tap or enter. So here I hit enter and you see it now changed the value and it, it displays up here in the editor view. You can also use the mouse to change the value by hovering over and then just scrolling the mouse uh, while hovering over it. Or you can just drag up or down. Now, um, I can also hold down shift to change this value in smaller increments. You can see I'm holding down shift now while scrolling, uh, sorry, while dragging the mouse. You can also use the arrow keys to change the value for the selected uh, tool. And let me just try and do that. So if I hit the right arrow here, you can see I'm changing the value. And now if I hold down shift, I'm nudging, uh, nudging it um, slightly. So again, adjusting it in uh, smaller increments. 
The local parent and world axes that I have here uh, will determine the numeric values shown for rotation and translation, as well as the direction of the axes shown here in the edit area. Now you can see currently it's set to local and if I change this to parent you can see these arrows will align up with the parent bone here and if I set it to world they will align up to the world, uh, the world direction. Um, also you can see the values here will change uh, here if I set it to local again I set it to parent these values change slightly and world now it's uh, based off the, the center here. Uh, I'll cover uh, this uh, more in depth once I get to each of the transform tools. You can copy the bones transforms by selecting one or more bones and then pressing command C. Let me try and do that. So if I select this bone here and I hit command C, I can go to this bone here and hit command V and you can, I can see the values have been copied. Let me just undo that again. We can also take an entire hierarchy uh, and copy multiple bones. Now, if I take these two bones, hit Command C, then I select uh, these two bones and I hit Command V, you can see that now the entire hierarchy has been copied. One thing to note here is also the way I have set up this uh, skeleton here. You can see I have the root, then I have a bone here, which is the parent of these bones. And I have another bone here, which is the parent of these bones. And the reason why I've set this up is to illustrate the difference between using local and world. Now, if I take this, it's like these two bones, I go to world and I hit copy, and I go to these bones, and I hit paste. You can see that now, since I was using the world axis, it copied the world position instead of the local position. So I would have to move it back. So that's one thing to note uh, how the axes um, affect uh, when you copy values. The pivot point for rotating a bone is always the bone's origin. So for example, if I take this bone here and I rotate it, you can see that I'm rotating around the base here. If you hold down shift while rotating, you can see it will now be uh, rotated or constrained to 15 degree increments. Rotation in spine is always normalized between 0 and 360 degrees and I'll get into how this affects your animations later on but let me just show you what this means. You can see rotation here. If I rotate it, see I will go all the way up to 360 and then it pops back to 0 like so. Using local or parent here uh, in the axis together with ro uh, rotation means the rotation is relative to, to the item's uh, parent, where zero is pointing the same direction as the parent's uh, x-axis. So what this means is, now if you notice, this bone here has a rotation of zero. And if I go here and I set, and I look at what the rotation is here, while the axis is set to local, you can see the rotation is set to 43. I'm just going to set it to 45 so we have a nice round number. Now, if I change this to world now, you can see, whoop, well, the rotation is still 45. But if I now go and rotate this bone, you can see the world rotation is 21.88. Sorry, the rotation is 66.88. And if I now go to local, I still have 45 because it is still relative to the parent bone. It will be the same if I select the axis to parent. So using the world value is the counterclockwise world rotation where zero points to the right and 90 degrees is up and so on. And let me just try and show you this. So now I have the rotation at zero, set it to 90 points up and rotate it, you can see 180, 270, and we're back at zero. The X or Y handles on the translate tool icon here in the edit area can be dragged to restrict translation to do to a single axis. Like for example, if I drag the Y handle here, the, the green arrow, 
I will restrict it to the Y axis. And if I drag the red axis, I will restrict it to the X axis. I can also change it to use world instead. So now I'm restricting it again, but I'm restricting on the world axis. And I can do the same for parent, which is, this is the parent of this bar. And you can see that is aligned. These arrows align up with this here. Now, if I switch back to local, you can also see that if I zero out the Y, I can drag a straight line from here to there. And what this means is that the translate value is the distance to the parent bone and it is used using the local axes. And as you can see, the X axis is pointing in direction uh, of this bone here. Now, if I change this to world, you can see the Y axis changes because the world position, which is based of the center here, is 15.57. And on Y axis, it is 17.4. If I change it to the parent, uh, it means that the it also uses the distance to the parent bone, but instead it uses the parent's local axis. And this means that now if I zero this out here, see it jumps down Actually, I hit nine instead of zero. So there you can see now it is aligned to here. So let me do that. You can also translate multiple bones uh, by using parent or local. So I'm gonna select these two bones, set it to local. And now if I translate this, you can see that I'm translating them in two different directions. And this can be useful if you want to um, move a lot of bones in different directions at the same time. Uh, changing it to parent, you can see they will now be aligned though, uh, but they will be depending on this bone here. The X or Y handles on the scale tool icon here can also be dragged similarly to the transform tool. So if I drag this, you can see I'm scaling along the local axis. Oh, sorry, I'm restricting it to, to one axis. So I'm gonna do that. Um, scale will always be applied using the items local axis. We see even though it's set to world down here, it shows the local. And if I change the translate, the world uh, now Y is pointing up and X is pointing left here. If I change it to local, this is how the scale will always uh, also look. So this is very different from traditional transform and it might be a little surprising to new users of spine. I'll give you an example of what it actually means. Now if I rotate this bone here and this bone here and then go to scale and I scale along the X axis, you can see these bones, which are children of the selected bone, are being scaled on their local axes. If you don't want this behavior, you can go and select these bones and then turn off inherit scale. And now if I scale this, see that it's uh, only scaling the selected bone. We chose this approach to scaling because it means scaling will never result in skew. Uh, in the future, it's possible that we'll change this to use traditional scaling instead, since it makes things like squashing an entire character much easier. Currently, due to always scaling on the local axis, a scale of minus one uh, may not cause the skeleton to face in the opposite direction. And if I put this back here, you can see what happens if I actually go and scale the root bone here. See, it's scaling all the bones in local axis, so the character is not flipping. Instead, now if I want to actually flip the character, we can use these flip properties that we have down here. We're flipping both an X and Y. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, in the next video, I'll be going over the bone length tool. Uh, I'll also be going over how to use compensation, uh, the create tool, and I'll be going over the options here. So I hope to see you there and thank you very much for watching. So bye for now.